Whether new shooter, longtime gun owner, or even police officer or soldier, your handgun needs a Crimson Trace laser sight or light. Get the confidence and reliability you need to protect family, home, and country. Crimson Trace. Broadcasting nationwide, this is Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. Your views, advice, and questions are the driving force of gun talk. Call Tom now at 866-TALK-GUN. That's one Tom Talk Gun. Or reach out to us via email at tom at guntalk.com. Let us know what you think about the gun-related issues of the day. Now, here's Tom Gresham. All righty. I need to talk about something for a minute here. We, we have a guest. I'm going to ask her just to wait. I'm going to put her on hold. There's something I need to talk about. And I only need about three minutes here, I think. We had a situation in Cleveland yesterday. A 12-year-old boy was shot and killed by the police. He had a, looks like maybe an air gun, maybe an airsoft gun, not sure. I think it was an air gun, BB gun, pistol, in his waistband. He had taken off the orange tip that denotes it as being not a real gun or painted over it either way. He wanted it to look real. Police were called. The caller, 911 caller said, I don't know if it's real or fake. It actually, that doesn't matter in the slightest. Police came, ordered him to put his hands up. He reached down and started to pull the gun out of his waistband. Officer shot him and he died. 12-year-old boy. There are a few takeaways here. One, it really doesn't matter if the police officer was or was not told that it's possibly fake. It looks real. This person is told, put your hands up, and instead he reaches for a gun. What do you think the officer's going to do? Oh, 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 what would you do? What would you do? You'd do the same thing. You'd shoot. Also factored into this, we have the entire nation, every police officer, every police department in the country right now at this moment as I'm speaking to you is on some form of elevated alert waiting for news from Ferguson, Missouri. Do not discount this. This is real. For everyone who's listening to carry a gun, understand that police officers are going to be just a little bit tuned up, a little bit revved up about this. If it was a traffic stop, be careful. Conduct yourself accordingly. Be um, compliant. Do exactly what they tell you to. Don't move quickly. Before you move your hands, announce what you're going to do. Officer, is it okay? I'm going to reach into the glove compartment now to get the registration. No surprises. Everybody's on the same page here, okay? For parents, grandparents, etc., and you have kids, explain to them the dangers of having any gun, real gun, fake gun, whatever, out in public. Police, are, they can only do what they can do. They can only react to what they see. And when they see somebody, and, and trust me, a 12-year-old can kill you just as dead as a 72-year-old. And they know that. You need to talk to your youngsters about this and start early. And when you're told by the police to put your hands up, you put your hands up. Work it out later. You can say, well, I wasn't. No, no. There is no, I wasn't doing anything. What are you doing? No. Shut up. Get your hands up. You may save your child's life, your son, your daughter, your grandson, your granddaughter. Have this talk with your the youngsters in your family. I am sorry that we have to have this conversation. I really am. But we have to have this conversation. All right? We love shooting. We love the shooting sports. Some of us have guns for self-defense. We take this very seriously. We are responsible. Part of this responsibility is to educate the members of our family from early age. And these are threats that maybe if you're, you know, got gray hair, that you didn't think about when you were growing up. But they're out there now, and we have to pay attention to them. And we would be negligent if we did not educate the members, the young members of our family about this. So 
my takeaway from this is this is a terrible tragedy for everybody involved. I cannot blame the police officers at all from what we're hearing, what I know so far. Just a horrible situation. Yeah, you, know, you can do the why, 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 why did you have a, an air gun out there? Why, why, you know, and we all go back to that. Take responsibility for your actions. And that includes educating all members of your family about the dangers of even toy guns out there. Not that you're going to hurt yourself, but somebody could misinterpret, call it in. Police are called. And what are they going to be ta- called? They're going to be told somebody has a gun. And they're going to roll in hot. Let's be careful out there. That Let's think it through. Think about the what could go wrong and take actions to make sure that doesn't. All right. When we come back, we're going to be talking, well, about, you know what? There are sure a lot of women who have gotten into guns and shooting and they're having a good time. And they do it just a little bit differently from the rest of us sometimes. And viva la difference. Back in a minute with more gun talk. Devil Tap Ammunition, we hand inspect every round that we make, and we use only the best components to give you the best ammunition on the market. Try us out at www.doubletapammo.com and use the promo code GUNTALK for 10% off your order. The 100% American-made Ruger American Rifle is now paired with the 100% American-made Redfield Revolution 4-Plex Rifle Scope. Making it an American icon and rifle scope package offer, the Ruger American Rifle with Redfield Revolution Rifle Scope maintains all of the features of the full-size Ruger American Rifle and also includes a Redfield Revolution 3 to 9 by 40 Rifle Scope that offers resettable stainless steel finger-click AccuTrack adjustment. The Ruger American Rifle with Redfield Revolution Rifle Scope. Another American-made product from Ruger. The 45 Auto, also known as the 1911, is the standard other defensive pistols are measured against. No matter what pistol you carry, techniques developed around the 1911 are vital. You know you need training. And you know your concealed carry class definitely was not training. Now Gun Talk presents an exciting DVD, Fighting with the 1911 with Tiger McKee. Tiger's unique training style will have you drawing, moving, shooting, and running your gun better, no matter what style pistol you prefer. At ShopGunTalk.com, you can order our DVDs of Tiger's instruction. ShopGunTalk.com also has a two-DVD set, including Concealed Carry One. Get both for the information you know you need. This really is life and death. ShopGunTalk.com has DVDs, books, and other essential gear. ShopGunTalk.com. That's ShopGunTalk.com. The new Walther PPX offers a smooth trigger, ambidextrous magazine release, three integral safeties, rugged construction, and the famous Walther ergonomic grip. All this at a great price. Right now, get a free magazine, holster, and dual mag pouch when you purchase a PPX. Feel the perfect fit of the Walther PPX at your local gun dealer or go to WalthurArms.com for more information. That's WalthurArms.com. Accurate, powerful, consistent. At Double Tap Ammunition, we offer 364 loads in 83 calibers that give you exactly what you've been looking for. Try us out at www.doubletapammo.com and use the promo code GUNTALK for 10% off your order. It really is amazing how many women have gotten into shooting in the last several years through, well, competition, certainly. Probably a lot of them decided, I'm going to take care of myself, probably through self-defense, whether it's concealed carry or having a gun for at home. You know, as I've said before, a lot of women have said, you know, no more of this pat, people patting me on the head and saying, there, there, little lady, we'll take care of you. Don't worry about stuff like that. <laughs> no, not so much. And what's happened is a lot of them have discovered, hey, this is a lot of fun. You think? Yeah, that's why we do this stuff. It is a huge amount of fun. And now, you know, ladies being ladies, they're going to band together, they're going to get together, and they're going to shoot together. Juliana Crowder is joining us right now from A Girl and a Gun. Hey, Juliana, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you today? 
I am good. I, you know, having just been to the first uh, all ladies three gun shoot out there in Atlanta, I came back kind of smiling and going, yeah, there really is a difference. You ladies just are so social and you really get together and you, you know, you band together. There's just a different vibe at a woman's shooting event. Um, there certainly is. I mean, you don't go to normal matches and have people clapping for you when you unload and show clear. <laughs> you know, that's just something that the girls do because they're happy, you know, for their, you know, for their fellow woman that she just did something so amazing and awesome and was confident and safe and that, you know, cheering and clapping is just something naturally that happens. Would it be going too far to say that you guys just have more fun? Um, well, you know, we still take it seriously and we still beat ourselves up when we do poorly, but I think that we don't um, get too caught up in the, I have to be number one or I have to, you know, place in a certain, you know, section. We definitely want to do well, but I really think we just un- enjoy the camaraderie of the event, um, enjoy the learning experiences that we have. So yeah, fun naturally happens with all of that. It's you know, and certainly there are some very serious uh, women competitors out there. Oh who, yes, that they, they, I mean they really can kick butt. I mean they they can shoot yes. and they're serious about it, and they want every last tenth of a second in there, and they'll fight for it. But at the same time, there's a support that's evident there that I don't see when the men shoot. And maybe the men are supportive, but they're just not as overtly supportive. If that makes well, sense. And- Absolutely, and that's just, a di- you know, the difference between men and women and how we socialize. You know, there's the the guy code of, you know, how you guys talk to each other and, you know, how you <laughs> silently pat each other on the back. And, you know, for women, how we express ourselves is just slightly different. And like you said, it is definitely visible when you go to an all-ladies event or even when you just see ladies on the range together intermingled in, you know, with, with mm-hmm. the men. So tell me about a girl with a gun, or a girl and a gun. Yeah, so, you know, we're coming up on our fourth anniversary in February, and um, what started off is just me getting a few women together at the range, uh, you know, a couple of times a month just to work on some skills and, you know, make sure we're still putting rounds down range and providing a safe place for them to find training, get their concealed carry, learn how to shoot, um, has turned into, you know, this whole program now where we are seeing women not only getting the training that they desire, but now where you know, our mission was to get women into competitive shooting sports because we know if they relate this activity to an athletic you know, sport, a connection, they're more likely to practice and carry in their daily life, therefore being more proficient if the time should ever come that they need this tool for self-defense. Mm-hmm. So four years later, it is so nice to see our mission coming full circle of having, you know, we're going to have four national events next year of regional training besides what's happening in our local chapters all across the country. And that's Holy all because cow. the women are asking for it. I know it's amazing. Now I'm looking on your website and it's a girl and a gun dot org. Uh, and I'm seeing a picture of you know, different pictures of training and all, but I see a picture of a helicopter. What is that? Well, at our national conference um, last year, and again, um, this coming April at our conference, um, our range master just happens to also own a, a company that does uh, helicopter training and hog hunts and, and fun shoots and tours. And so that is an, an opportunity that the ladies have. They get to not only fly in the helicopter, but they shoot you know, their ARs out of the helicopter <laughs> at designated Ooh. targets. And, you know, for some, it was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and if they get come back, it'll be a twice-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Um, it's just another fun thing that we get to do. Okay, so uh, this is started out as a local thing, and now it's a, a girl and a, gu- a gun women shooting league. How does somebody get involved? How do you join? Where where are the shoots? What's what's involved here? Well, we grow and we have somebody at a local level, a, a female who wants to take up leadership and you know share with her community her knowledge or you know her love of shooting sports. And from there, we start chapters. And if we have a local chapter, the ladies join and, you know, grow their community and the activities they do. If there's not a local chapter, uh, that's another reason why we have these national events. You know, we have women all over the country that actually don't have a chapter, but they 
join us and, you know, they meet sisters from all over the country and, you know, have meaningful experiences a couple times a year, um, show up. You know, membership is not required to participate with us. If you like what we're doing and you want to support the mission, that's what the membership is there for, just to help us keep growing and, and keep giving back. Now, I notice that you, uh, you don't talk about just shooting. You talk about training a good bit. What kind of training we're talking about? Well, it's meaningful training. It's not just going to the range and practicing wrong. If, you know, the ladies need a critique or a tip or some leadership, some mentoring, we want to provide that. And then we want them to start taking professional classes. I mean, all of our all of our leadership are professional instructors. We encourage them to then seek out more um you know, hardcore, meaningful training and really understand what they're doing with that firearm and really understand what it means to use it for self-defense and when and how. And then also the fun side of it. How do I be a competitive shooter? That's what our three-gun university is going to cover this May. How do I safely sling my rifle and run, you know, 100 yards with my shotgun? Because there are tips and techniques that, you know, make you more successful. So training to us is such an important part of being a gun owner. It's, you know, more than just buying the gun. It's, you know, having a relationship with the firearm, having responsibility about your actions and doing meaningful things with that firearm, you know, not only for self-defense, but for competitive shooting sports or, you know, just going out and shooting and trapping skeet maybe. Okay, and now you've got a, uh, some kind of a, a getaway coming up, right? The Battle Mine? What is this? Yeah, so that's part of our Girls Getaway um, program that Remington is presenting, and that is a quarterly uh, activity that we do. Our first one was back in October where we did uh, we went to Winnington Center and we did some trap and skeet, long-range rifle, and we introduced the girls to natural train three guns. In February, we have one coming up, and it will be um, in Tampa, Florida, where we have Shooter's World is putting on a training course for us. It's called Battle Mind Special Ops Training for the Real World. And this is part of that stuff we need as, you know, responsible gun owners of when and how, if we ever find ourselves in those situations, to, you know, really use that tool appropriately. So that'll be an exciting um, event for us. That'll be a very serious weekend. I guarantee um, you, there, you there know, are a lot of guys, there are a lot of guys listening right now who say, I'd like to go to that. Well, and you know what? There's, there's classes all over the country every weekend where we can. And, you know, co-ed classes or, you know, you'll oh. see guys showing up every weekend. But to get the ladies sometimes to come out, you know, we got a lot of head trash sometimes when we talk about, am I good enough to defend myself? Am I worthy to defend myself? Sometimes ladies oh. just need a special environment to mm. clear out that head trash. And actually we bring part of our program is we have a life coach. Her name is Kelly Moore. She comes to all of our events and she's there to counsel and to help women realize, you know, their purpose and realize their um, what empowerment really means and to move forward, not only as, you know, valuing yourself, but becoming confident in the sport. So we're really looking at the whole person, you know, with our events going forward, and we really want to change lives. Breaking barriers is what we do. Terrific. All right. The website is agirlandagun.org. Yes, that's it. All right. Juliana, thank you so much. Congratulations on your success, and I hope it just keeps growing for you. Well, you know what? We are looking every day on how to keep growing with this female uh, community and, and giving them what they need. So it's an exciting time every, you know, every planning season. It's exciting to see what we get to do next. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to share it. Absolutely. Good luck with it. All righty. Let's go straight to the phones. By the way, if you'd like to join us, 866-TALK-GUN. We'll get you in here. 866-TALK-GUN. Scott is on line four in Toledo, Ohio. Hey, Scott, what is this uh, rifle you got there? Or it's a, I guess it's a handgun. You got a, a 1911? Yeah, Tom, I, uh, I got an ugly puppy to happy range report story for you. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, what happened? Well, I ordered me one. I got a nice big tax refund a couple of years ago, and I said, I'm going to order me a stainless. So I ordered it, and when it came in, I was so happy to get it, I just opened the box. I said, yep, that's what I want, and I shut the box, and I went home. Mm-hmm. Well, I started looking it over, and there was little details that was popping out at me. I didn't like the way things, some things were fitting, and the sights were actually slanted, and there were some scratches on it. So I said, well, um, I called I called the uh, manufacturer up, and they said, well, send it back to us. So I sent oh, you, it back. You, you, hey, hey you, you can tell us who it was. It's all right. Oh, okay. 
Uh, it was actually a, 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 a Springfield Armory, uh, 1911, mm-hmm. but it was a uh, Brazilian contract piece. Okay. It, and well, I sent it back, and it came back with a, uh, the barrel was unfinished, too. So I didn't even fire it. I just sent it back. Came back with a good barrel on it. It was a match barrel, according to my uh, my Smith. Mm. And and uh, I went out to shoot it, and I was having trouble dropping the slide on a uh, full magazine. It wouldn't feed the first round. Hmm. So, so I took it back to my Smith. I had him look at it for me. He said the breech face is out of spec and it's deformed. It looked like somebody cut it by hand. Okay. So I sent it. I sent it back a second time, and it came back with a new slide. Oh, so they okay. sent it back with a he- a heavy recoil spring on it. So I took it back to him. I'm like, dude, make this thing run for me. Yeah. So he slicked it up and and he uh, did a few things. He gave it a ramp job and everything, and. It's always been accurate. I mean, accurate. I shoot it like fifty feet, but it just—it just the sights are still slanted. As a matter of fact, on the new slide, so <laughs> I just left it alone and I shot it, and it shoots. I can—I can get it dirty. I can feed whatever I want through it. It's going to feed it and fire and eject it, and it's just fine. And it just t- just keeps on shooting for you. Well, look, I appreciate the range report on that, Scott. I'm glad that. Uh... Springfield Armor, you gave a, a chance. I came back and uh, took care of it for you. Thank you for that call. I, I, I mentioned earlier, I, I have to get this in. The folks at uh, Every Town for Gun Safety, the gun control group, they put out an email about uh, talking turkey, about talking about guns at the Thanksgiving dinner. And they've got these myths. They say myths like more guns in more places make us safe. And they said, well, see, the NRA's vision of guns for anyone, anywhere, anytime actually puts Everyone at risk. You notice how they set up the straw man. The NRA doesn't say that people ought to have guns anywhere, anytime, that everybody ought to have a gun. And then they say, um, myth, having a gun at home makes women safer from domestic violence. And they say, fact, women are five times more likely to be killed by an intimate partner when a firearm is present. The two have nothing to do with each other. But this is what they're up to. And let me tell you something. These folks are really good at social media. And if we don't get on board and really master the social media and cranking out the numbers, we'll be we'll continue to fall behind because right now I think they're winning the social media battle. Simple as that. Eight six six talk gun. Give me a holler. Tom Gresham's Gun Talk is broadcast nationwide every Sunday. If you can't hear Gun Talk where you live, call your local talk format station and clue them in on Gun Talk. Stay tuned. We're coming right back. Now broadcasting nationwide on radio, via satellite, and through downloads, iTunes, the Gun Talk app, and other podcast clients. You're listening to Gun Talk with Tom Gresham. You know, that's a reminder. uh, If you don't have it, be sure to get your Gun Talk app. You can get it on iTunes, of course, for your uh, iPhone. Also on Amazon for your Android device. Also, of course, you can listen to Gun Talk a lot of different ways. Uh, Stitcher, iTunes, iHeartRadio. You can go download it off our website. You can follow it there. If if you miss one, it doesn't mean you've missed it forever. You can go download it. Also, if you sign up for all of those, you get the after show, which is a part that we do that's not broadcast over a radio station. So if you want the after show, you got to go download it. And the app and these other ways to get it are, are very simple. Or so you go to guntalk.com. You can drill down and find it there. All right. Uh, 866-TALK-GUN is the number. Line one, Victor, is in Longview, Texas. Victor, what you got and what you want to do with it? Yes, sir. I've been a shotgun and a, a SK guy forever and ever, and I just got mm-hmm. a Rock Island uh, 1911 A1 FS 9mm. Okay. And I am trying to figure out uh, what what laser sights. Uh, I mean, what what I because I'm I'm kind of new to pistols and stuff like that. Uh, what laser sights um, are available? You know that that are good, right. but it's not going to break the bank. Well, uh, you know, uh, cost is one thing; good is another thing. So we're talking two different things. Let me ask you: Does this pistol have a rail on it? Uh. No, sir. A okay, top it rail? does not. Yeah, no, no, no. A rail, a rail underneath the barrel that you could attach devices to. It's kind of a Picatinny rail, uh, we call it, but it's actually a little bit different. But it sounds like it does not have a rail. So, I'm going to tell you what I like. 
There are different versions. There's a, a laser that replaces the guide rod in the pistol. Uh, that's uh, Laser Max. There are some you can attach to the gun in various ways. I personally carry a 1911 a fair amount, and I use the Crimson Trace laser grip. Uh, it, is, it replaces the grips, uh, the grip panels on your pistol, and it's they call it instinctive activation. When you grab the gun, just the, the action of grabbing the pistol turns on the laser. And so I, I like the Crimson Trace system, and so that's what I use. So that one's simple and easy to go to use on that pistol, real easy. And it just you just replace out the grips and, and with yeah. that, and that's okay. All right. I mean, you literally, you literally take off four screws, take the grip panels off, put this grip on it, and screw them in. And it also, oh yeah, the Crimson Trace system comes with batteries for life. They'll replace your batteries once a year for life. Okay. Uh, and uh, is that a? Um, uh, oh God, what was I fixing to say? Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, I was listening to you earlier. Do they make that in the Green Dot? Uh, yes, they do. As a matter of fact, they uh, they do have that in Green Dot. So you can get uh, red laser or green laser, either way. But I tell you, what, go to the website crimsontrace.com. dot com. You'll see what I'm talking about. And Victor, I wish you luck with it. Let me get to Brian on three. He's in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Brian, you've been thinking about this thing in Missouri. I take it. Well, uh, I, I just tuned into your show not too long ago, uh, ten minutes ago or something, and I heard you mention it. And I wanted to see: Do you read the Bankswitch dot com? It's like the military arms channel blog. Nope. You know, you should really should check it out. It's a fantastic site. Uh, it's Tim from Military Arms Channel. He has a YouTube channel. But um, anyway, so my the thing I wanted to talk about, because he had an article about it that was really good, it's called Ferguson Take a Stand. And basically, it kind of harps on when they had the, the L.A. riots back in the 90s. Of course, I was, I'm 25. I was too young to know what happened then. But he talked about the folks in Koreatown, or Koreatown you know, that were on the side, that their businesses were just getting destroyed. And that these, you know, a lot of these civilians went, uh, came together and made armed militias and sat on their rooftops and said, if you come and try to burn our business down and, you know, put me out of business and put my family at risk, then, you know, you're, you're going to be barking up the wrong tree. And mm-hmm. I, I guess the hard thing for me to do, I'm also an instructor in Louisiana, is to get people to understand that their responsibility for them to protect themselves is up to them. Uh, you know, the police well, will not well, be there. Well, Brian, 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 hold on. Take take a breath, Brian. Uh, Brian, here's the thing. There's nobody else who's going to take care of you. There's only you. It's always been the truth. It is the truth now. It will always be the truth. There's only you. Uh, somebody else may or may not come to help you, but they won't be there when it happens. And so you better have taken the steps both from a mental uh, standpoint, from an equipment standpoint, from a training standpoint, from a willingness standpoint, you better be ready to take care of yourself, and every member of your family has to be ta- ready to take care of themselves. So I agree with you. It is completely up to you, but that's not exactly what we we're talking about. I, I was talking about when the Ferguson decision comes down, when it may be minutes from now, and it's the grand jury is not going to indict this police officer. I mean, look, let's get serious about this. They're not going to indict him. Uh, this big guy punches out the police officer, reaches in, tries to take his gun. As we have talked about before, as Masada, you've talked about earlier on the show, when somebody is trying to take your gun, there's only one reason. They plan to shoot you with it. Simple as that. So if this guy reaches in, punches a police officer, and tries to take the police officer's gun, he intends to shoot the police officer with the gun. Every police academy in the country tells their officers, if someone wrestles you and takes your gun away, he will shoot you with the gun. It's real simple. At this point, we have a dangerous felon on the loose. So I doubt seriously that they're going to indict this police officer. And when they do, that will be called justice. But, you know, it's interesting. They're saying no justice, no peace, except that they don't really want justice. The protesters and the the folks who are agitating them. The, the, uh, the great phrase I heard, I never heard that before. They're called the, the race industry, and it is. Um, they're really not looking for justice. They're just looking for opportunity. Uh, so, but, but. The old what's in it for me, why do I care? Because law enforcement we are, will be on heightened alert around the country, not just in that area. 
And wherever you are, you just need to be more aware. You need to always be aware, but each of us needs to be just a touch more aware, if you will. And the idea being that we just have to watch where we go, watch what we do. If we are have a uh, an encounter with law enforcement, speeding tickets, stop, whatever happens to be, move a little bit more slowly, announce your intentions before you move, just you know, make sure that everybody is comfortable and everybody knows we're all here so we can go home at the end of the day. It's real simple. You got any thoughts about it? You've been thinking about it? Yeah, we'll talk about that. We'll go there. 866 Talk Gun. Brownells proudly celebrates 75 years of history and heritage as the world's first choice for firearms, accessories, ammunition, and gunsmithing tools. So whether you're a gunsmith in need of parts and supplies, a new shooter looking for the perfect holster, or a skilled competitor seeking the latest gear, Brownells has what you need. And best of all, every purchase comes with the industry's only forever satisfaction guarantee. Visit us at brownells.com. For 36 years, the U.S. Sportsmen's Alliance has been fighting to protect hunting, fishing, and trapping for sportsmen from coast to coast. Today, we are under constant attack from extremist animal rights groups who want to end your ability to hunt in the U.S. Join us to protect our sporting heritage and our way of life outdoors. To join or for more information on how you can help, go to ussportsmen.org. That's ussportsmen.org. or on the range, you need a trigger you can trust. For over 60 years, Timney triggers have been trusted by hunters and shooters everywhere. A Timney trigger could mean the difference between a great shot and a miss. Timney triggers are proudly made in the USA and come with a lifetime warranty. To order, go to TimneyTriggers.com. That's T-I-M-N-E-Y Triggers.com. You already know Liberty Safes are great values. Now they're offering an even sweeter deal for Gun Talk listeners. At LibertySafe.com, click on the Fat Boy Safe and type in Tom. Liberty will give you up to $250 off your purchase. Protect the things you value most. LibertySafe.com, click the Fat Boy Safe, promo code Tom, save up to $250. That's LibertySafe.com. LibertySafe.com. Hey everyone, I'm Doug Koenig, winner of more than 60 national and world shooting championships. You know what? I'm here to tell you that the only thing I like better than competitive matches with high-powered pistols and better than hunting big white-tailed deer is watching NRA Freedom Friday presented by Cheaper Than Dirt on the Pursuit Channel. It's true what they say. Pursuit Channel delivers the outdoors. The XDM 3.8 Compact from Springfield Armory is two guns in one. Use as your concealed carry gun with a compact magazine and use the extended magazine for home defense. Carry 13 rounds of 9mm in the compact magazine and a whopping 19 rounds in the extended magazine. To see the entire family of Springfield Armory XDM pistols, go to SpringfieldArmory.com. That's SpringfieldArmory.com. All right, back with you. 866 Talk Gun gets you in here. Let's go line two. David's with us out of Lebanon, Missouri. Hello, David. You're on Gun Talk. Hey, how are you doing, Tom? I am good. What's up? Well, I had a question for you. Our church did uh, once a church day at the range. I got that together, and I'd like to do it again uh, come the spring. But, um, you know, that was the first time I ever did anything like that. I'd like some good ideas from you on how we might be able to improve from what we did before. Well, what did you do before? What, what kind of shooting did you do? Well, you know, we had uh, before us a rifle range and a pistol range, and since I was the only one doing range safety at that time, we, we kept everybody on the same range, so we started rifle, went to pistol, mm-hmm. and that uh, was basically shoot, have some fun. We had young people there, we had older people there, men and women and so forth. But um, 
it was, it was a little slow because uh, some people needed a zero and things like that on the rifle range. Uh-huh. So I have some ideas, but I was wondering if you had any ideas. Okay, there. a couple of thoughts or uh, questions. How many people are we talking about? Well, uh, it was raining last time <laughs> up until the point we were supposed to start, so we only had about 12. I, I suspect when we do it again, we'll have between 12 and 20. Can you get some more people who will serve as range officers or instructors? You need one or two more. You need uh, probably, uh, you know, what I'm trying to do is get you to where you can have more than one person shooting at a time. You can't just have all those people waiting for one person to shoot. No, I, no uh, yeah, I got a, uh, well, you know, there's several uh, stations at the rifle range and the pistol range. But, yes, I do have somebody from another church, a uh, former Marine, who's uh, going to come and help. I'll tell you what will help. Um, make it fun and make it easy. Uh, fun targets are always a great way to go. Um, hard to beat balloons. Balloons on strings. Uh, let the wind bounce them around, tie them out. They put them on stakes. Let them bounce around down range. People shoot and pop balloons. Uh, just make it fun. Don't make it challenging at all. And just that way everybody can shoot, have fun, pop balloons. You know, the youngsters will enjoy it. Anybody will like that. Think of fun targets uh, to put out, uh, Ritz crackers, if they're shooting twenty twos, things like that. You want reactive targets. Uh, basically, it becomes a big shooting gallery. Do you, question, do you have access to clay target shooting where you're going? <clears throat> no, no. It's just a okay, pretty well then, break. All right, uh, we'll forget that. Just make it simple, but I would say try to have fun, easy targets, no paper targets. You know, uh, just just fun targets for them to shoot. And the thing is, paper targets are slow. Uh, reactive targets are fast. You shoot, you shoot, you shoot, you shoot. Everybody's done. Okay, clear all the guns. We're going to go put out some more targets and go that way. I think it'll be a bunch of fun. Do me a favor. After you do it, shoot me uh, an email or give us a call back and give us a range report on your church day at the range. I love the idea, David. Appreciate the call, sir. Let's see. Uh, oh, Bill's got a great story for us out of uh, Coos Bay, Oregon, line four. Hey, Bill, tell me this story, man. Well, uh, one of my grandsons was a bull hunting here about three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, he called in this bull to him. He was standing beside a uh, small tree. And the bull was shaking his head about his heck. And he had to step back a, a step so he could put the arrow into him. He was that close <laughs> to him. Man, that is, uh, and for those who have never done it, calling in an elk during the bugling season, the early season, is one of the most exciting things because when a bull elk, a big bull elk, starts bellowing and squealing, it sounds like a pipe organ with all the stops lashed down. It's just incredible. It makes the hair stand up on the back of your neck. And having, I've had them come in to within 20 yards, and I thought that was something, but having one come in to a touching distance, Incredible. What a, what an incredible experience. Thanks, Bill. I appreciate you sharing that. Dan's in uh, Oklahoma, line one. Dan, what you want to do with your forty five? See if Dan's still there on line one. Hey, Dan, you there? Dan put his phone down. He went to get a sandwich. Tell you what, let's go talk to Justin on line three. Uh, hey, Justin. Hey there, Tom. I, uh, I just wanted to mention... Um, a few weeks ago, my wife and I, we DVR a television show called Scandal. She really enjoys it, and I'll sit down and watch it with her. And one thing I really noticed is how they're trying to push gun control through television and just day-to-day programming. Oh, absolutely. And it's it's something I never really noticed very heavy. And I'm a big-time pro-gun. You, should, you know, I kind of agree with you. You should not have to ask. You know, mama, so you can go out and buy a gun, that type of stuff. All right, all right let, let me stop you, Justin, because I'm, I'm going to be out of time. First of all, let the station know you don't, you don't appreciate it. Let the producers know you don't appreciate it. Let the advertisers know you don't appreciate it. Don't just shrug and say that's the way it is. You got to push back. Here's what's going on. There are people who go to television producers and present them with storylines that involve gun control. That's why we're suing the NRA via Tom Gresham's Gun Talk website and receive $10 off the regular membership price. Log on to guntalk.com for details. You're listening to Tom Gresham's Gun Talk.
just because we're wrapping up on the air doesn't mean we're done talking about guns. Stick around for the after show. It's our podcast only version designed to include all the stuff we simply couldn't fit into a regular show. Call in now at one Tom Talk Gun. Now back to Tom. I get a lot of uh, emails from people. Want to know, well, what was that guest? Who is he from? It was TopGunSupply.com. He's wanting to know about that one. We had a fellow talk about the AR-15s we talked about earlier. He says, I, I hate the T-handle. It's hard to work with, you know, when I got the gun at my shoulder, but I love the flexibility of it. I love being able to swap out calibers and do that. It's it's an amazingly adaptable platform, the modern sporting rifle. And, and make no mistake, this is not a euphemism. When we call it the modern sporting rifle, that's exactly what it is. It's the modern rifle that probably two generations of military veterans now have come out of the military shooting the M16 or the M4, and when they get out, they want a similar rifle, and the AR-15, the semi-automatic version of that, is, is what they know. And so that's what they're using. And now we have them in 308 in a bunch of different calibers. Just a lot of things going on to us. 6.5 Creedmoor, man, there's a caliber to pay attention to. That, that's got to keep, keep growing. It's just a real nice, sweet spot. I, I'm actually thinking, since I like the 7 mm 8 why not take one of the 308 AR-10, if you will, platforms, ARs, and have it in a 7 mm 8 yeah, or 260. 260s are very popular also. Very nice caliber. So anyway, a lot of things you can do. As you're looking toward the holiday season, it's almost Thanksgiving, so it's time to really make your list. Um, save room in your budget, if you will. We're going to have our gun talk gun. i got my fingers crossed. I'm knocking on wood. With any luck, in two weeks I'll be able to announce it here. We'll put the word out. And once again, like we did last time, we only sold a limited number of them. When they were gone, they were gone. And a lot of folks said, man, I can't believe I missed out on it. Yeah, well, don't miss out on it this time. So uh, in two weeks, if everything works right, I keep having to qualify that, we'll be able to announce it and you'll be able to get on board. So you want to pay attention. We'll, we'll give you that information. So in the meantime, of course, you can start making your other list of cool things you want. Or, you know, I tell you, I've gotten to the point where if I there's something specific I want as a gift, I either take a catalog and circle it so that they get the exact one, or I order it for myself and put my own name on it and stick it under the tree. <laughs> Been known to do that more than a few times. It's how we make sure we get what we are looking for. All right, I, I do want you to, first of all, after show. If you've not heard the after show, you're in for a treat. We're going to give you a, a good dose of the after show next week. Uh, also, you can, of course, download it. You know, go to guntalk.com. You can do that. Uh, a lot of ways for you to pull down the after show through uh, iTunes, through a lot of different ways. You can do that. I think you'll enjoy it. It's it's a different take. It's a different vibe. If you'd like to be involved in the after show, if you'd like to participate, give me a call right now. We can still get you in. 866-TALK-GUN. We will hold you over, and you will be part of our after show. Pretty cool stuff. In the meantime... Yes, tensions are high. Be careful out there. Not that you have to conduct yourself any differently. You should always be careful. You should always be aware. You should always have situational awareness. One of the things you may want to do, if you're thinking about what would be a really cool, out-of-this-world, fabulous present for myself, for my wife, for my family, training, baby, training. Good training locally or make the trip. Go to one of the great gun schools out there. There are a lot of them out there. Uh, Paul Howe in Texas, Gunsight, uh, Thunder Ranch, Shoot Right, uh, Range Master in Memphis, Tom Gibbons, a lot of good places out there. In the meantime, go out and do some shooting. Take somebody with you. To take pictures, put them on Facebook, spread the word. You're a shooter and you're proud of it. Be safe out there. Have a great Thanksgiving.